the Period Place podcast. Shark Week. <laughs> Riding the cotton pony. Yeah. I have salsa in my taco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rag Week. Oh. Rag Week. Oh, that's bloody hell. Bloody hell. Okay. Bloody hell, Harry. <laughs> Period Place podcast. Thanks to our mates at You by Cotex. All right, we are here for episode six, and this is probably one of the uh, most exciting topics that uh, we're going to delve into because I think all of us are kind of in a space where we know some uh, something about it, but not a lot about it, and we're all just going to have a nice candid convo uh, learning. And uh, it's periods in Tiao Māori. I'm excited about this one. I'm Pakia. I This isn't my space. Mm-hmm. I'm learning. I've been learning uh, more over the years. Recently, mm-hmm. we held a, a workshop, a uh, Treaty of Waitangi workshop training day for our team and volunteers and and we looked at the treaty through the menstrual lens mm-hmm. um, since it was signed uh, and hasn't been adhered to and what that meant for menstruators mm-hmm. uh, and it was so fascinating but it was a you know everything that we're doing at the moment is just a, a place of journeying a place of listening and oh, I just I fucking can't wait to get into it and yeah. hear about everything that there is to hear today. Yeah, and I'm sort of on this interesting journey of learning more and more about my um, heritage and my papa. and um, like this week I went and got a my first ever tamoko. <gasps> so like, you know, that's really oh, exciting. Girl. So oh, that's I've been, so um, amazing. And for anyone who doesn't know what a tamoko is, you know, it's just a, um, it's, it's a tattoo, but it's when you are of um, Māori heritage, you call it a tamoko and I think it's called something else if you don't have any of that lineage. But it's just kind of um, something where I could put my fucker papa on my body and be able to see it all the time and just re- be reminded of where I come from and it kind yeah. of represents my whanau, my ancestors, how I got here, the journey I'm now going to embark on. And so it's the start of your mihi map. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And so, like, I, I think this is, it was almost like it was meant to happen this week that we do this podcast yeah. that I've now got this. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm ready to connect. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to do this. So um, we have a very special guest on the show um, with us who goes by the name Terina. And she is um, she is Māori as well. Uh, but we'll be able to learn heaps more about her when she's on. So let's just get into it, eh? Well, actually, just before we get into it, I've got a quick question. Uh-oh. Following up from last week's um, episode where you went on the date with your friend's older brother. <laughs> <laughs> was there a second date? Uh, no, there wasn't. He ghosted me. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> yes. All right, so let's just get into episode six, periods and see our Hey, it's Danica here. Just before we start the podcast, you by Kotex believes a period should never hold you back, which is why, as well as keeping you covered and stress-free during your period, they're pumped to support us in smashing stigma and starting positive conversations to support people with periods. They also love the Period Place podcast and want you to know that you can catch replays along with more info on them and their products at you by Kotex, A-U-N-Z, on Facebook, Instagram, or on their website. Thanks for the support, team. All right, back to the podcast. Hello, thank you for coming. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you for having me. No worries. So um, usually whoever comes on, we just preface it by, um, you can just give us a background on who you are. Um, maybe for this episode you can say like your ethnicity, your heritage, where you come from, sure. what you do for a living. Just give us the whole rundown. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm Tedina Trippinell. Um, I currently work at Māori Television, but I have a bit of history in journalism. Um, so I started my Te Ao Māori journey or kind of getting to know myself and explore like my papa, but more a few years ago when I decided to uh, take on Māori media at Auckland University of Technology. So that's wow. where I learnt a lot, a bit, of, a bit of everything, like Māori development, who I was as a person. Amazing. Um, you know, kind of filling that void, mm. that filling cultural gaps, void. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then from there, I kind of figured because of the lack of representation and the way that we are portrayed in the media, because mm. I'm also a Pacific Islander as well, I'm Tahitian. Oh, wow. um, so I thought, you know what, this is an opportunity for me to kind of get in there, mm-hmm. you know, represent my whanaunga, uh, mm. you know, from the Pacific Islands, you know, not just Tahiti, you know, we, we branch out to, you know, all of Polynesia um, and, you know, just kind of slowly make a difference. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to navigate it at the moment and where, you know, where my place is, but it's exciting. I think just like starting like and embarking on that journey is yep. the first step and the scariest step for a lot of us, especially yep. some of us who maybe don't have as much melanin as the next person, you know, <laughs> we kind of sit here and we don't know where we fit in yeah. in that whole, um, in the puzzle we call life. But I think, yeah, it's kind of our responsibility to start learning this yes. stuff. Yeah. So um, props to you for like getting on your journey. Um, and maybe because this is a period podcast, uh, what is your sort of experiences 
with periods? Have you had a pleasant time with periods? Like, what was your first period like? <laughs> Does anyone ever have a pleasant time with periods? Well, actually, your next tattoo, like, my pleasant period. Yeah. Um, well, actually, um, well, my story is quite common, but it's not really spoken of. I mean, you know, the the Preach whole system. corridor around um, periods is not really spoken of. But for me personally. Um, I got my period at a really early age, mm-hmm. at the tender age of eight years old. Oh, oh my girl. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, so you're ready for menopause. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm already there, girl. Um, well, so when I got it at the age of eight years old, um, you know, fortunately, you know, uh, I have this really solid relationship with my mum where we can have open mm. discussions about mm. everything. So, you know, that was really... Uh, good for me but you know when she's kind of explaining like what this is and what point I've reached in my life it sucked yeah. it also, sucked hearing it, about it that's a big conversation to yeah. have with an 8 year old exactly. like that's a big conversation to have with an 11 to 13 year old but yeah. at 8 you should be yeah. running around playing games exactly. and just being a kid yeah so it, you know it was horrifying because I'm like well I'm still a kid but like I'm stepping into adulthood yeah, already nah, not ready yeah it just it sucked and so well, you know, eventually you get to a time where everyone has their periods. So it's kind of like normalised. But my experiences were also, you know, I had like very heavy periods, you know, um, extremely painful, like real bad cramps, you know, to a point where I'd have to take time off work. And, mm-hmm. you know, like even that was kind of isolating because that's not the case for all women either. Mm-hmm. You know, some women like, you know, have it like quite smoothly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was my experience up until... I became a mum, which was last year. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so, but I feel like we will explore that a little bit more throughout the podcast. Yeah. yeah. I definitely feel the same. Mine used, my period used to be real heavy, real painful, and it's lightened since I've had kids, and it's yeah. way less intense. Yeah. Um, but, like, the fact I had to carry kilos of baby and be pregnant mm. for, like, two years to lighten my periods, I don't know if it's been worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, not sure about that. <laughs> Surely there's other ways to lighten it. Exactly. <laughs> How do you think being a um, identifying as both a Māori and Tahitian or just Polynesian um, for that act, do you, would you think your um, cultural background has sort of affected your experience with a period, whether that's positive or negative? Um, yes. Um, I think for me it, it is actually positive because, as I said, I didn't really get into my, uh, my te ao Māori journey until a few years ago. And ever since then I, I had this whole – my perception changed on who I was. I became more solid in who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I think realising and learning where you're from, especially as Māori or any Pacifica, um, realising and learning where you're from is such, it's it's so important because that's who we are as people, is connecting, you know, finding where, finding our place and like where we connect to. So that's made such a huge difference. Like even for something as periods, um, like on the surface, you wouldn't see like how those two connect, but for me, like it's made all the difference. So, um, yeah, definitely a few years ago, everything's kind of changed yeah. for me in, mm. in, in the best way possible. I, I sort of agree with it in that sense. Like it's only like recently that I sort of started delving into, you know, just like what my culture meant to me and, you know, how that sort of affects my experience, experiences in the future. And, um, you know, spin off did this amazing article about, um, and I think it was released last year in 2019 about how, um, we, you know, basically we should be decolonizing our bodies. Like this, yeah. like the shame us being so like fuckama, like shy about our periods is is a um, and like an attitude that was sort of implemented into us mm-hmm. or, or into our you know Maori culture, New Zealand culture when um, colonizers came over. It, because before that, it, like, and this is what I'm learning. Like, and I and I forgive me if there's anyone listening who maybe knows a bit more about this topic than me. We're and, all on the journey together. You know, together. we're we're all trying to like, be on this journey together. Um, but it was actually um very like to have a period was so beautiful being a Maori woman, and it was kind of like if you weren't doing anything for a week. It wasn't because, you know, oh, no, oh, God, she's got a period. She can't do anything. Yeah. It was more like, no, 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 you've got to do this. You just stop what you're doing. Yeah. Let us work around you because you're doing this beautiful thing, which is having a period because you can birth a child. Like, yeah. yes. It's, it's powerful. A, yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful and amazing thing. And I wish that that those kind of um, ideas were what we learned in school, right? Because mm-hmm. we didn't. We barely learned anything. You know, it's the same that that colonizing approach has, you know, Aotearoa is not the only country that was colonised by the British. Mm, yeah. That British, I don't even want to say stoicism because it's not stoicism. It's okay to be stoic. It, it's powerful at times to be stoic. But the colonisation and 
reprehensible overtaking of of culture was done at uh, through to so many different countries and cultures around the world from from not just Britain but a lot of European countries and they came in and they ruined for so many people that experience in uh, India it's common f- um, for you know women to be told or people with periods to be told uh, you know no you can't come into the temple um, when you're on your period mm-hmm. and we recently shared something on our Facebook page um, by um, somebody who was speaking to that and said this is basically just a lot of bullshit it started off with the idea of no, it wasn't about women not coming to temples because they were dirty and gross. Mm. It was because they were menstruating and they were going through something special and it was like, girl, you, you sit down, have a rest. You don't mm. have to get up and, you know, walk 20 miles in the snow to school with no shoes on and, you know, come to the temple and, and pray during this week. You get the week off praying. We'll all pray for you while you stay at home. Mm. And, but that got bastardized into, oh, she's dirty, she can't come. Yeah. And it's the same here in Aotearoa for Māori and for Pacifica. People have, have turned something that is tapu into something that is, they've bastardized that, they've ruined it. What's your um, sort of knowledge, Tadina, on, you know, this whole um, decolonizing our body? Like, do you know much about it in the sense that, like, um, at, you know, as a Māori woman, like how, you know, powerful, um, you know, our ancestors thought that periods were, is, are those some kind of attitudes that you want to sort of, in, um, like, embrace yeah. Like you know, now that you're a mum and yeah. you know, like uh, like passing on to the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fortunately, but also unfortunately, like the kind of empowerment that came with periods didn't really come until you know I gave birth because mm-hmm. you know when I'm going through pregnancy, I'm realizing like you know how beautiful it is. Like yeah. mm. and, like I'm beautiful internally and externally, and I'm like, look at this amazing thing that I'm doing. It's like it's the first time you allowed to stop and connect to your body exactly Mm -hmm. yeah and so I was thinking wow I've created life I'm nurturing life you know I'm growing life inside of me and I'm giving birth to life and then even after you give birth because you know like the pain's excruciating (laughs) on different levels for different women you know but it's just like you know I went through that I did that and so like I feel so undefeated and then you know even the recovery process like I'm so grateful for my body and then just knowing that my period is also connected to um, what we call uh, te whare tangata. So that's like the the name for the womb. Mm-hmm. Um, just knowing that my period's connected to that and what it has done, my whole perception of it has completely changed. Like it's just a wonderful thing. So in a weird way, when my period does come around, I celebrate it. I'm like, yes, I gave birth and that's where it's connected to. And like the other thing um, in Te Ao Māori and why um, periods are tapu, and as you've pointed out, Tegan, is that, you know, it is connected to um, our ability to give life and to mm. give birth. And, you know, when women are on their periods, they are tapu. And that is something that was, you know, is widely respected, especially among mm. men, because that our people are important. You know, we aren't a community without our people. Mm-hmm. And, um you know, so there was a whole respect thing for women, as you guys have pointed out as well. And so I think, you know, given that, you know, currently and for generations, you know, we've been in a patriarchal society, it's it's really all about kind of unlearning that and, you know, understanding what tapu means. Because if we translate it to like the English word, like taboo, it's, it's not. That's what I mean about the, the bastardization. Yeah. 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 People have taken things that are tapu and beautiful and spiritual, yeah. and, and they've it's, gone it's sacred. It's it's not. Yeah. It's not. There should it's be no forbidden. shame. It's not stigma. Yeah. It's yeah. sacred. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they've gone. Oh no. The translation of that is yeah. this. Therefore, like forbidden or yeah. something like that. That's just. But re- yeah. Because tapu, like when you think about it from a, like a religious aspect, it's sacred. And what do you do when something's sacred? You respect it. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. I yeah, I do encourage like maybe anybody listening, um, whatever your heritage may be, to actually like really dive into what it meant to um, sort of have a period and stuff like that. Because honestly, if I knew, maybe if I knew like 10 years ago uh, on the, or 10, 12 years ago when I was on the, the beginning of, you know, having my periods, maybe if I knew how like beautiful my culture, like yes. how high it was, it, like it was held in such high regard, maybe that then that there's years of like shame that like maybe like mm. running off to the toilet or like hiding my tampons and pads. Like yeah. maybe I would never have had to do that because I'd be like, yeah. you know what? No, I'm a bad bitch. Yeah, I exactly. get this period and I do this yeah. and, it's, and it's so like, 
like um, just acknowledging our, I think, our heritage in that sense and how they uh, just went about everything is so mana enhancing. Mm. Yeah. And it's just, oh, I. It almost makes me like emotional because I'm just like I just wish I yeah. wish we knew that so long ago. But I'm so, it's so um, like humbling to know that the, now we're sort of yeah. all, it's like we're yeah. normalising the conversation yeah. and it's really yeah. beautiful. Have you read anything by Doctor Nahui Murphy? A little bit, and I actually a friend of mine. She um, actually like went to university with her like randomly, and she's quite she's the she's the goat. She's yeah, she's the OG for um, Te Ao Māori and mm-hmm. menstruation in New Zealand, and we've got both of her books and we've read her, um, you know, her white paper and everything. And she knows her shit, man. Mm. Obviously, you know, she's, she's spent the time to, to research, research. Mm. Um, and then, but not just research for herself, but then create something to share that back out with the world, which yeah. is so awesome. Just even, even the um, ways that the word period or, or your menstruation cycle is translated into Māori because our language is so, and I'm not fluent by any means, but like trying to learn more about it, but our our language, you can never translate anything directly. Like no. No. saying something like, I love you. There's no direct translation for I love you. Um, there's sort of a term similar to, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it means like something is so much more powerful and spiritual, you know, like we're such spiritual people. Yeah. And even just the fact like, there's a, there's quite a few different translations, but te awatapu, like mm-hmm. the, the sacred river, that's mm. yeah. what our period is translated yep. to. And I yep. think that is the most beautiful thing ever. And if you if you were calling us like, yeah, sorry, I've just got the sacred river for this yeah. month, you know, just like, <laughs> like, wait, relax, relax. Like even this week, I think on Monday at work, I got my period over the weekend and on Monday I was just like. I've got mine again. I'm just like, oh, wait, wait, we really? have we're actually honestly cycle synced. sisters now. Christ. I, I was just finished like, mine. I think it was meant to be. It was meant to be. <laughs> oh. I was like, boys, I was just like, oh, I had like, some you're right? serious issues today with my menstrual cup. Like yeah. I'm like, it's in, it's out, it's in, cup. it's out, it's yeah. in, it's out. Like normally I love it, but I'm just not figuring it out this cycle and I'm just like in the bathroom with my leg up on the sink in the office and I'm like, this is not what I thought adulthood would be. <laughs> I, I'm loving the conversation now, especially with the boys that I work with. Like, they might have been a little bit like, mm-hmm, at the start. But, but now, now, I'm like, yeah. they're like, oh, are you tired? Like, if you, you know, you get a big weekend. I was like, I have, but I've actually just got my period as well. So I'm just like low-key dying at the moment. I'm just like, yep. don't worry about it. Um, I've And I had these tight jeans on and I should not have worn them. Mm-mm. I was so bloated and I was literally like the whole show. Like, yeah, totally unbuttoned. <laughs> Completely unbuttoned, and they were like, "Are you all good? Do you just need to like go poo?" And I'm like, "May probably because you know when you when you bloody got your period, it's like but you, how need, awesome you know to is go it? just take like big ho- shits as well." I know that's <laughs> like I know that's like TMI, but guess what? We got to talk about oh, it. Oh come on, you what get guy diarrhea doesn't, sometimes? What guy doesn't look like talking yeah. about the size of his shit in the toilet? Oh, exactly. <laughs> come on, but I yeah, and just uh, I know that's probably a little bit of a tangent, but just like no, the 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 information I've been now been fed with this whole like decolonizing our body is like so much more powerful for me. I've got mm. honestly no shame in yeah, it. No. I when I read that whole spin off article, I was like damn, like, oh, I just feel so much better about yeah, it. Yeah. But every translation of um, menstrual cycle into Māori always has just like, it's just a nice meaning. It's yeah. not It's yeah. not scary. It's not, there's no stigma around it. It's, it's not like, rag week. It's not uh, the no. communists are coming. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not any of those, like they're euphemisms, <laughs> not translations, but yeah, it's yeah. positive. It's yeah. powerful. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's nothing, yeah. I mean, I'm Australian. So like our words are like, mate, shrimp on the barbie, <laughs> uh, you know, I can't. I can't think of a translation in Australia, uh, you know, in English where it's just What do you guys call wharfs? Jetties. Do you call them wharfs here? You don't call them a jetty? It's a wharf. It's a wharf. What the fuck? Oh, my God. Sis, you've lived here for ages. How did you not know that? (laughs) I still call them jetties. Like my my three-year-old this morning, called him my eight-year-old then, well, skipped ahead, and my (laughs) three-year-old this morning was like, Mom, where are my jandals? I was like, I don't know. You don't own jandals, mate. You own thongs. Oh, my God. I absolutely love that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's so many people out there who – experience periods in their own way Mm. and there's people who are not Māori who might be interested in learning about um, engaging with their period through a different world view. Like a a different lens, right? Through a different lens. So, you know, obviously we've got Dr. Nahuia Murphy, um, there's resources from the Spinoff, there's resources online, but but just sitting here talking amongst friends like we are, if, if we're in someone's ear right now, what would you say to them if they are Pākehā or if they're, um, you know, from somewhere else in the world uh, and they want to explore mm. periods through a Te Ao Māori lens, mm. you know, how, how, could they, how could they get started without feeling like they're taking over, without they're coming in and recolonizing yeah, it? Yeah, like colonising our own you stuff. You know, or yeah. appropriating it. Yeah. Well, I think... You know, if you're non-Māori, I think this discussion also, like, it's it goes 
beyond periods as well. It's also as women, like realizing like how wonderful we are mm-hmm. because we are. And, you know, that kind of mana, whether you're Māori or not, was taken away from us mm-hmm. like generations ago. So it's kind of reconnecting with yourself and, um, you know, kind of realizing like what your abilities are, um, you know, as a woman, like we're, we're great multitaskers. Like, you know, that it, it doesn't seem like a big thing. But, you know, when, I, when I'm talking to my partner about several different things, I'm just like, <laughs> did you not remember what I just said five minutes ago? And he's like, you're nah. talking about a hundred different things. Like, what are you on about? You know, <laughs> like we are like superheroes in our own ways. And I think, um, you know, we're in a society where that's just not allowed. Fortunately, we, you know, we're in a generation, we're in a time where we're dismantling it, we're mm. unlearning and, you know. We've oh, had enough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so happy to be a part of that now and, and to kind of contribute to that. But, you know, as I said, I think it goes beyond like periods. It's more like, your, you know, your relationship with yourself. When your relationship with yourself improves everything in your world, regardless of what lens you're viewing it from, everything kind of flourishes and everything's beautiful, you know, just realizing who you are as a woman and it's just great, you mm-hmm. know. Every woman's just wonderful. Yeah, that's true. There's a saying that I love, what's good for Marty's good for everyone. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that, I that you say that. And I think that that's so appropriate. Uh, yeah. So like, not appropriate. So it resonates so much with me with what you've just said, because yeah. if you are at peace with yourself, then mm-hmm. you would be looking or experiencing through yeah. that, through the, a Marty type of lens, because yeah. traditionally... Marty respect themselves. Yeah. yeah. And I think also, and we've spoken about this sort of like connection between like your sort of spiritual health, your your like physical health, your mental mm-hmm. health, like how it's all connected. And we've talked about it when we were um, talking about periods of nutrition, like yeah. how it's all connected and, you know, and um, te ao Māori, like the whole, is, is it the whole water? Is that, yeah, yeah you know, it, it's all, we have to have if all the t- uh, the boxes ticked mm-hmm. in order to be like a fully functioning person. And I think, yeah, like you say, like connecting with your body and actually yeah. just being like, owning your shit like yeah. own it all and don't be afraid about it don't be embarrassed about any part of your body however it functions whether you think it's normal or not nothing's actually normal it's yeah. just like there's a little like cookie cutter version that they've put out in the media mm-hmm. put yeah. out in society you yeah. don't have to fit in that mold and you that's don't okay. have to bleed blue and ride unicorns on the beach mm-hmm. when you've got your period 100 you can, you, can yeah. you know bathe naked in the in the red river let it happen <laughs> just sit i've never done it before but i've let always wanted to just happen. have a bath and just have my period you know what I mean? I feel like that would be really just like in the bath. Yeah, just just really empowering to just like let it let it happen. I've actually done that before. Yeah. It's not as bloody as you think it is. Well, not for me anyway. It's not like the tub so, filled up with blood or anything. <laughs> when when you when you're in the water, the water pressure on your body does something, and it kind of like um, pushes against, and so not as much blood flows out when you're in yeah. in the water. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, it doesn't just like pour out like yeah. you would if you were standing up in the shower. Mm-hmm. Probs also because you're laying down to like. Hashtag gravity, mm-hmm. but uh, there's there is actually something about the the pressure from the water that does that. But it's it is just nice to sit there and then kind of stand up. And if you've got some bits and blobs, mm-hmm. rinse them off in the shower. Yeah, um, yeah. You can look after my house for Christmas and mince straddle through my bathtub okay. if you want takes. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not doing anything. Um, and also, Tarina, like, so we've talked about how uh, maybe we could start where we could start if um, a person with a period was to maybe uh, explore. Te ao Māori sort of um, practices around your menstruation cycle, um, you know, through a pake, like as a Pakia through a Māori lens. But where would you, for maybe someone like me and you who was sort of maybe late on our journey or maybe not and just wants to learn more about it, where did you start and where would you recommend to start like learning? Well, uh, we're talking about periods, right? Yeah, yeah, periods. Yeah. Just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, everything you know, like, in life. Everything, yeah. Um, so, well, for me, um, I actually just asked my Fano. Oh, yeah. I asked my nana, mm-hmm. I asked my mum, I asked my aunties, because my nana, she's in her 90s. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of, she's got the whole like pre-colonisation kind of customs instilled in her memory. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my auntie, who's like, you know, kaupapa Māori hard, like she was, she's one of, you know, like p- people that I've looked up to, like she's kind of championed um, media, you know, from a te ao Māori perspective, like way back. Um, and my mother as well. So um, I know that's not... Um, that's not available for everybody out there, you know, because we there is a cultural discourse, there is a cultural disconnection, mm-hmm. you know, not everyone actually knows where they're from, not everyone lives on their whenua, which is actually a big deal. I don't live on my whenua, hence why, you know, there was this massive disconnection and hence why I had this yearning to go and study 
um, you know, I'll just start anywhere. Like, yes, my my family have, you know, they're able to fuck a papa back to um, this place and that place, but at the same time, like, you know, coming down generations as we're, like, going through, like, Western influences, mm. it was, it kind of had a massive impact on me. And, you know, my mum and her, her siblings and my nana, you know, they were at school during a time where if you spoke to your Māori, you know, it was, you know, whipped out of you, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, there was physical violence at school. Mm -hmm. So I missed out on a lot. So I felt like it was my journey to kind of, you know, do what I could. So in a way, I, I am kind of privileged to have, you know, the um, wahine Māori mm -hmm. in my family to be able to pass that on. So, but for the people who don't have, you know, komatu around or, you know, their parents or something, um, it might sound a bit like in, in a corny, I guess, but you know there are resources out there. Like especially for periods, you know, um, a lot of my knowledge, aside from you know getting it from my nana, especially like because you know uh, we're in a time where I, I'm challenging everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. challenging what what everyone is saying, and so I'm just like, wait, that doesn't sit right with me. So I'll Google it, and um, there's ah. Oh, there's a wonderful wahine Māori that I've crossed paths with. So her, her name is Anna McAllister. And she's written something about um, periods as well. So anybody listening to this, I forgot the name of the article exactly, but if you look up Anna McAllister and periods, surely something will come up. Um, it's a wonderful written piece. Um, and I think, yeah, that's a really wonderful start as well. And again, it's all about kind of reconnecting with yourself, um, exploring yourself, honouring yourself, respecting yourself as a woman, mm -hmm. um, which is, yeah, I think that was a really big thing for me as well. Not like if if we're talking about um, you know learning outside of Fano, which is a big thing. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I've just given uh, Anna McAllister a quick Google, and she is a writer for the spinoff. So if you just, oh there we go, <laughs> yes, yeah, so there you go. She's on the spinoff, and just the the article that I have been um, referencing throughout um, this corridor is um, obviously on the spinoff.co.nz and if you just look up decolonizing your body you'll find it but some of the resources mm. that they use on there that maybe um, if you want to explore more about your journey I might just read them out now um, so there is um, by uh, Dr Ngahuya Murphy it's Te Awa Atua, Te Awa Tapu, Te Awa Wahine and her website is waifero Dot com, so you can go check that out. Um, it's also reference uh, o honouring our voices, mana wahine as a kopapa Māori theatrical framework. That is by Leone Pihama. Um, Marino Harker Smith has done uh, something called Potent and Pollutant. Uh, Kim McBreen has done the Tapu of Taonga and Wahine in a Colonised Lands, which I think uh, that sounds like a bit mm -hmm. of it sounds like a bit of me. Mm -hmm. And this one is from uh, Wiki Toria August, the Māori female, her body, spirituality, sacredness, and mana. Um, so you can go check out any of those resources. I believe uh, most of them are books, but yeah, waifuro.com, That is Dr. Nahuya Murphy's. Um, um, website there but yeah just go on the spin-off just google that now, <laughs> that article is the best place to start if you want to start your journey and learning more about periods and te ao Māori yeah I'm so grateful that those resources are out there you yeah know, 100%. because they weren't there like maybe 10 years ago oh I, I, exactly we've been in this space for three years and yeah. the the development that we have seen um, especially through Indigenous people being louder about their experiences and demanding spaces be made for them in their in their way that yeah. they are should be able to experience their periods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't even have words. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It's, yeah. um, and we need to clear more spaces to learn this way, to live this way. Mm -hmm. We all need to do it. It's not just, it's not just for Marty to stand up and say, this is how I menstruate. It's, mm -hmm. it requires everybody to stand up and say, this yeah. is everybody's version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way we're taught to experience our periods is just shit. It's boring. Yeah. Dumb. It's lonely. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. stigmatizing. It's yeah. medicalized. It's yeah. there's nothing about it. And at the period place where we're all about autonomy and choice. And if you want to um if you connect with your body and then choose to not connect with your body anymore and say you want to go on the pill and skip it, we're fine with that. And if you connect yeah. with your body and then decide you want to be naked like I've said before, bleeding under the full moon every month, that's okay too. But it's about not going on the pill at eight years old because you have to yeah. Yeah. or not bleeding under the full moon every month because you have no access to period yeah. products and you yeah. have to. It's about yeah, both sides of it. Both yeah. sides of it, but mm. after that mm. connecting, after. Yeah. It's about making a choice to experience your period in the way that yeah. you want to. 
Oh, yeah, that was a beautiful quote at all. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, Tarina, thank you um, so, so much for joining us for this podcast. It was very special. Oh, thank like, you for having very me. Very special. Like, I just love this quote at all so much. So what you do at Māori TV, if you want anyone to, like, find you, do, is there, do you want to give, like, yeah, oh, wait, do you want to give your IG a plug? Yeah, Are man. you good? Okay, <laughs> fine. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Um, okay, so if anybody wants to find me, I'm other Mother Tarina, kind of a spin-off from Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Tarina, I love that. So it's M-U-T-H-A Tarina. Awesome. Thank you so much, girl. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay, so that is the end of episode six, Periods and Tia Māori. What a amazing corridor we were able to have. And um, uh, But I feel like I want to emphasise it was a light corridor. Oh, very, very light. And because we were sort of sitting in a space, which I think was an important space to be because this one was quite an intimidating one, I think for all of us or maybe you actually Danny you know a lot more than even I do when it comes to just yeah, like the beautiful my job know, yeah mm-hmm. I mean yeah you, you're an expert sis you're an Period's expert my interest and me definitely not being an expert it was nice to be able to have sort of an open and honest conversation mm-hmm. with Tarina who's someone who maybe is in the same sort of journey as, as me and many other um, Māori uh, people or woman or whoever um, who is having their period maybe maybe it's a, a, a it's a man who mm-hmm. maybe just wants to know more about his daughter or wife's experience I don't know but um it was just nice to have that conversation where we were all kind of just just having a chat, mm. just having a chat. And I just think I want to really take on the whole point that what I go through, what we all go through, it's sacred as fuck, all right? you know, Sacred what? as fuck. Don't ever come at me and say that I can't do a job just as good as you while I'm on my period because I'm doing it all. Mm. I'm doing it all. You're pushing out a kid, mate. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know how you still have a period while you're also a, like a full time at the period place while you're also a full time mum. Like, incredible. I'm just feeling like, oh damn, it's good to be a woman. It fucking is. It's yeah. powerful. It's spiritual. I mean, you're only 24. I can't fucking wait for you to get to 30. If you think if you think you're on fire now, <laughs> you turn 30, you wake up the next day and you're like, whoa, Beyonce, hey, watch out, mm-hmm. like. And Who then, run the world, girls? And then every year further into your 30s, it's mm-hmm. just more and more powerful. You just take less shit mm-hmm. and you just feel that 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 mana. Mm-hmm. You start to own it yeah. rather than be scared of it. Fuck yeah. Can't wait for that. And, hey, next week, episode seven, which will oh. be our last episode of the season. I'm sad. Um, yeah, I am a bit sad. But next week's super exciting because we've actually got a few different guests on. The episode is going to be about periods and people in Aotearoa, so people from all walks of life. And yeah. so here are some of our guests. We've got Linda Vangana, who I'm really excited to um, share her story with you all. We interviewed her um, and she shared what it was like to be a, a, a silver fern running around on the netball court representing your country and having a, a surfboard slide mm-hmm. up and down your undies yep. because as a Pacifica uh, woman she couldn't have a tampon mm-hmm. and, and what just, that meant for her. Just being a professional athlete going through that whole kind of experience. We've also got Lucy Blackiston from uh, Shit You Should Care About that amazing powerhouse phenomenal media Instagram blog platform that it is. Thing. I don't even know A couple of million followers. Yeah I don't even know how to explain it but Hashtag fuck Trump. Yeah hashtag fuck Trump pretty much and uh, so we've got Lucy as well and we also have Morgan Penn the and one and only best sexologist in New Zealand. Finally, we get to and talk about vaginal mapping. Oh, she's hilarious. I, I am there. Put wait. my legs up on the table. So make sure you come next week, people in Aotearoa. And oh, having their periods. <laughs> All right, that's us. We'll see you episode seven. Bye. Bye, girl. The Period Place Podcast. Thanks to our mates at You by Kotex. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok at The Period Place. Hosted by Danica Revel and Tegan Yawur. Special aroha to Sarah Mickelson. Produced by Kyle Thompson and project managed by Heidi Thompson. Both from Blue and Ginge Creative.